We have the pleasure of having Devin Miller with us today of lawwithmiller.com. How are you doing, Devin? I'm doing wonderful as ever, no complaints. Great, we love to hear it. So why don't you just tell us who you are and what your company does? Yeah, so um, obviously Devin Miller. So I founded Miller IP Law, which is a patent and trademark law firm um, about uh, two and a half coming up on three years ago. And it's really a law firm that's focused on helping startups and small businesses with patents, trademarks, copyrights, business formations, and those type of things. Basically what you'll need uh, legally to protect and grow your business. Nice. So a little bit of everything just in a legal form. (laughs) Exactly. Yep. Perfect. And how did you get into that? Yeah. So, you know, short question always elicits a longer answer, but you know, probably the, I guess going back to undergraduate. So I was um, looking, I was undergraduate. I did a electrical engineering degree as well as a Chinese degree. So, and I was getting towards the end of the engineering degree and really saying, Hey, I love engineering, but I don't want to be an engineer Mm -hmm. in the sense that, you know, most engineers, you get stuck on, you're either a small cog in a big wheel, you're stuck on a project for a long period of time and it can get a bit, you know, monotonous or you don't have as much variety. And so I'm Mm -hmm. saying, I like to continue to do engineering, but I don't want to be an engineer. And so I looked at kind of, and a lot, so I kind of looked at it and said, well, one thing I love is startups and small businesses. Another thing that's always been of interest is the legal side of the patents and the trademarks and some of that. And so I kind of decided I want wanted to do both. So I decided okay. uh, when I went to graduate school, I did uh, dual degrees in both an MBA or master's of business administration as well as a law degree. And so, you know, fast forward, you know, part of when I was in law school and MBA school, I was also entering into a business competition and decided I wanted to, um, you know, try or do, do, do something for the side hobby and for fun. We entered in the first year, didn't go much anywhere. Same group came back the next year and we came up with an idea to do a wearable for hydration monitoring. And this was in the days before, you know, the Apple watch or Fitbit or any of those that come <laughs> out, just came up with the idea. I think it'd be fun to be able to monitor hydration. And part of the reason was I just ran my first marathon and it was, you know, one where I didn't hydrate well enough and thought it'd be mm. great if I had a device to help me to make sure I hydrated properly. Mm. So that kind of got my whole journey started on startups and small businesses and loving that, doing it myself and also loving to work with them. And so that kind of in a nutshell is then when I continued on, continued half or one job was doing mm. all the startups, small businesses, the mm-hmm. other was on the legal side, worked for some of the biggest law firms and did the, you know, top 100 law firms, um, worked for clients like Amazon and Intel and um, okay. Ford and others and decided, hey, the clients I really love is startups and small businesses. That's really where I want to focus on. They're the most fun. You can have the most impact. Yeah. So when I started my own firm, that's when I, when I started Miller IP Law, that's where we put the focus. So Longer answer to a shorter question, but that kind of gives a little bit of a backstory as to, to how I got to doing Miller IP Law. Definitely a backstory. And it seems like you almost have a, now your business is like a combination of personal experiences and then career experience as well. Yep. No, exactly. So, and, and I said, I split my time and attention between a few things. I have Miller IP Law, which is a, certainly a big focus and takes 40 or 50 hours a week. And then at the same time, I also have an, uh, other startups I work on that take another 40 or 50 hours a week. So I certainly have a lot of things to juggle along with the wife and four kids and other things that keep me plenty busy and, uh, and uh, keep me out of trouble. Yeah, it's definitely a fulfilled life <laughs> so far. That's right. good. That's great. So how do you then create fresh opportunities to best serve your customers? Yeah. So, you know, it's, how do I create opportunities? Well, one thing is we always, we are always looking to connect our customers together. And so far to, you know, a lot of times we have a lot of different clients, you know, we do everything. I, I do my own podcast and it's much more focused on the journey that inventors take, but we get, I get to meet a whole bunch of different and interesting people. Mm-hmm. So one of the things we do is, you know, as we come across and we meet every front thing from marriage therapists to angel investors, to inventors and startups and small businesses, to product development, manufacturing, and kind of list goes on and on. And so as we're always looking for opportunities to help clients, one of the things we'll do is we're always looking to make those connections of how to make sure that, you know, if, hey, you can use a software developer and we happen to know a software developer over here, we'll make those connections or, hey, you need to do, you know, you're going through a tough time in your marriage because you're working too many hours and you're frustrated here's a marriage therapist that we happen to have on the podcast that we can connect you up with and kind of always making those connections as a way to help them to grow and to expand their business in addition to making sure that with the legal side that we help them to protect and grow their business with the the patents and trademarks and copyrights and whatnot so it's almost like 
you have the legal side, which can kind of be seen, you know, stiff and rigid in a way as far as the industry goes, but you're really incorporating, like you said, building those relationships. And if someone's struggling in one way, the podcast almost gives a way to also have those connections for people as well. Yeah. So, I mean, it's the connections across clients, across mm-hmm. guests on the podcast and kind of how we can not just simply, you know, have the, Hey, bring us a legal matter. We'll write it up. We'll submit it and we'll be done, you know, done type of thing, but how we can actually along their journey, add the value. And sometimes we'll have clients that, Hey, six months down the road, I'll have a new client or a new somebody on the podcast says, Hey, these would be great people to connect. And I'll shoot off an email and say, Hey, these, you know, here's a connection that you guys may be able to have an opportunity to work with each other. And it, it seemed like it was a good fit and it'll make, those connections all the time along the road so kind of is that taking the next step of not just doing the legal work but also making those connections to help out the the startup or the small business however we can absolutely and so then how do you leverage flexibility to continue to think out of the box as your business has been growing yeah i mean you know think out of the box is always a bit of a a cliche or an overused term um but you know where we the, the mantra I typically take uh, with, the, or with the business is more of, are we doing things because that's the way it's always been done? Or are we doing things because it makes sense to us? And if it's mm-hmm. because it makes sense to us, we'll keep doing it or we'll improve it, but we'll keep down that path. But if we're saying, hey, yes, this is always how it's been done, but it doesn't really make sense to us or it seems like there's a lot better way to do it or a different way, then it'll take the time to explore and develop that. And so we'll do that on, you know, we have a, a, a consortium. One of the newer projects we've been working on is DIY tools in the sense that we realize that not everybody can afford our legal fees and so we're saying how can we help them so that if you know and are much or less expensive now granted i still think an attorney does the best job but i also understand that startups have more money or more things to spend money on the money mm-hmm. to spend and so if they're looking to say hey what can we do within our budget then we're looking to provide more options and so we're looking to expand how we're doing things to anticipate you know both what other costs or people that aren't our cur- or normal clients or current clients how we can expand that reach as far as how we can also see where things are headed and how we can make sure to anticipate that and offer it to our clients. Right. So it's that kind of the combination of old school and new school and like, you know, you want to keep the base, the foundation, but then you also want to be able to evolve as well. Yep. No, exactly. Perfect. And so then what would you say makes up your secret sauce that separates you from the rest of the industry? Um, yeah, a few things. I would say the one thing that's the easiest answer, but one that oftentimes is overlooked is customer service within the industry. Mm-hmm. So if you're to look at most attorneys, most um, law firms, industry average is most of the time, about 60 to 7% of the time you reach out to an attorney, they just never respond back to you. Mm-hmm. So that means that they never call back. They never respond to your email. They're too busy or they just put you off. Of the ones that do respond back, the industry average uh, is three to five days to respond back to an email, a call or anything else. And so you're saying, okay, first of all, I mean, if I call 10 attorneys, seven will never call me back of the three that do call me back. They're going to take, you know, if I call them on Monday, I might hear back from them by Friday type Mm -hmm. of a thing. And that one, you know, is first of all, it's a terrible way to run the business and it infuriates people. Hey, if this is something critical, if I need legal help, if there's something that is needing immediate attention, I need that help now. And so we always took the approach of, Hey, we have a rule that, you know, most of the time, I'd say 80% of the time, we're, we pick up the phone and respond to the email or whatever mm-hmm. the communication is right away. 90% of the time, if we happen to be caught up or we can't respond, 90% of the time, it's within 30 minutes. And 100% of the time, our drop dead rule is, is we respond by the end of the day. So at most, you're going to be waiting till the end of the day to hear from us. And most of the time, it's right away or within 30 minutes. And it seems like it's an easy one to do, but that's one of the things that we found more than anything se- separates us and, and helps us to to service a client. So we're, we're trying to help out one of the other things. And then, you know, that we often do is we've looked and said, I guess two more things. So you asked and I'll give you a few <laughs> um, is we look at, uh, you know, how is a fee structure set up for, for a lot of the legal industry. And most of the time it works on, Hey, you come in, we'll work an hourly rate. We'll send you an, uh, you know, however many hours we worked, you'll pay the bill. And, you know, half the time is frustrating, frustrating because you send an email to the, you know, to the attorney, you think it's a two minute email and you get billed for half an hour, or you think mm. you're anticipating this will take them a couple hours, they bill you for five hours. And now it's a lot more expensive than anticipated. So we, we, uh, adjusted that or changed that to really 95% of the things we work on is going to be on a flat fee. We have it all inclusive okay. fee, makes it easier to understand, makes it easier to do. The last thing, and then I'll, I'll take a pause and uh, no, we please. can answer some other questions. Lots of secret sauce. Also do, <laughs> <laughs> the other thing we do is we do um, strategy strategy meetings where it's, it's free to the client. And really it was one of the things we found is 
people always were hesitant to go into an attorney because they figure as soon as I walk in the door, I'm going to hear the cash register with a ka-ching, ka mm-hmm. type of a thing to where it's going to cost me money. And maybe I don't need an attorney or maybe it's not the right for me. And I don't want to go spend several hundred dollars just to be told that I don't need this or they can't help me. And so we removed that barrier and said, hey, if you have questions, if you need advice or you need, a, or you want, or need something clarified, we don't charge you. We'll sit down with you, take a half an hour, strategize with you. We may tell you that it's not the right thing for you and you, or we'll say, hey, you should think about this in six months and hold mm-hmm. off for now. Or we say, hey, you're behind the eight ball and you need to catch up. But we'll kind of give you that legal along with the, the business advice. And, uh, you know, if listeners want to or are interested in that, they can just go to strategymeeting.com. That's an easy one to, or an easy URL to remember. Just go to strategy meeting, grab some time with me, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, perfect. And so would you say that as far as the first point about the customer service, do you think you kind of brought that in from your previous experience in other industries as far as how important it is? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of a combination. Part of it was looking at what other industries you take in, you know, and one of my favorite things is to look at how other industries are doing things, not just look and say, well, how is the other people in the legal industry doing things? But let's mm-hmm. take whether it's, you know, some of my, I love to listen to podcasts, uh, you know, and one of the ones I like to on the marketing is real estate marketing. They're great at marketing. They have to be, there's a very competitive field. And so why not take what they're doing in real estate and apply it to our business? And same thing, mm-hmm. I know I look at amazon.com and they have great customer service. They have quick shipping. They make, you know, they've changed it to where now people are, if you don't get your package within a couple of days, you're frustrated and wondering what takes so long before they came along. That wasn't the case. And so I said, Mm -hmm. how can we apply a lot of those things in what is being done in other industries to the legal industry? And how can we make that, you know, first of all, is this a pain point? And yes, it is. And second of all, how can we now take what other industries are doing and incorporate it to what we're doing? Right. So it's always kind of a a self-reflection as far as the business goes and see how to compare it to yourself, of course. Yeah, and exactly. so with that constant self-reflection, then how do you see your business moving forward? What is your vision? How do you plan to make that happen? Yeah. I mean, in the one sense, it's going to continue on as, as we're doing now in the sense we're, we're always rolling out new programs. We're always looking for ways to help clients start up small businesses. You know, we have clients that are bigger. We have clients that we service, you know, help out, but really our focus is at startups and small business. So now we're looking every, you know, every day or every week, we are looking for how to, what new programs, what new things can we do? What can we do different first to stay ahead of the competition, but not just to stay ahead of the competition for competition's sake, but really to make our firm always improving and always better. And that's kind of been our mantra and what we continue to strive to do. And so really it's going to be looking for those opportunities, looking for what we can do different and improve and then implementing them in order to continue to provide better service and also in order to help grow our, the law firm to continue to be able to service more people. Great. Well, I can't wait to see all that happen for the future for your business. And so you mentioned about the free strategy meetings, where to go uh, besides the website, is there anywhere else that people should go to for more information about you or the company? Yeah. So I'll give you the three we've already kind of hit on two. Law with mm-hmm. Miller. Dot com. That one's just a general one that goes to our website and then you can see our fees. You can see all that we do, learn about more about us and myself, the firm. Um, you can also schedule your strategy meeting on that if you don't go to strategymeeting.com. Okay. But so lawwithmiller.com, strategymeeting.com. That's an easy way to grab some time mm-hmm. for um, to talk with me and you go over your strategy. The last one, if people just want to reach out to me personally, they have questions, they you know go over something else outside of that, they can just go to meetdevin.com and that's another okay. easy way you can just grab some time on my schedule. I'm always happy to talk. Perfect. Devin Miller, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing all that information. Oh, it's been my pleasure. Always fun to share and always fun to chat. Absolutely. And great. And good luck with the rest of your business in the future. Thank you.